appropriate that we finish today's talk or today's conference uh, with all of us making this presentation. So what's new? Uh, this is a presentation we make each year. Whoop. What did I do? For, I'm going to start with what's old. Um, everybody knows that we, we have been increasingly uh, improving and adding to our ProNet database of professionals. And we get asked for referrals all the time now. And so we built our database to be able to keep track of all the CPAs and estate attorneys and, and uh, on and on, uh, people who can be helpful to you so we can help match you up with needs that you have. And I just want to remind you, if you need assistance, we've got, we've got a database full of names. We're doing a lot of work with the next generation in your families. Uh, we have really kicked that into gear, I would say, over the last, JC, two years, um, where we, we are having conversations uh, with your 20-year-olds and your 18-year-olds and your 24-year-olds uh, you know, and 30-year-olds. And hopefully that's, you know, hopefully they're out of the house by then. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, we, we are talking with them about money and about investments and, and what their challenges are and uh, about, about your family and, and, and it, maybe its approach to, to money. Uh, but we find these to be really, really helpful, not only to the young people in your families, uh, but to you as well, because um, sometimes as a parent, I know this as a parent, you, it's not so easy to talk to a kid and have them, or a young adult, and have them listen. Uh, but, but they tend to, when we, we talk with them and give them a book, and it, it opens up a line of communication so that they know that we're here to be able to help them as well as they, as they get older. So we're doing quite a bit of those, and I enjoy that work quite a bit to meet the young people in your families. NCM 360, which is our uh, client information uh, platform. I don't know any other firm that has built their own client information platform, but us. And we're gonna give you some, a couple of updates on it. Catherine will talk about some of the things we've added that you've asked for. Uh, and and um, so we'll talk about that. Uh, the journal we put out, we send that out every Friday. Uh, and um, I want to give a nod to Catherine on that. Catherine and I sit down every single week and go through what is it that we're going to, to put out in the journal. We hope you read it because it's not articles from the usual suspects in the media. We're giving you both our own writing and uh, information that's coming from our business partners. Uh, so you're getting, you're getting information from within the financial services industry, unfiltered, not going through editorial boards at the Wall Street Journal or, or CNBC or whatever it is, but you're getting, you're hearing from the analysts within and the, and the thinkers within our business partners. Um, st we started this this year, Money Mindfulness Meditation. We've done two sessions where I've just sort of led people through some, some thinking, some sitting and some thinking about uh, how to become more stress-free about about wealth and money, and uh, I'm planning to continue that. I think we've gotten some good feedback on that, and um, <clears throat> so I think we're gonna we're gonna stick with that. Things that we're working with some other companies. Pontera is a company. It was started by the guy who uh, who started Waze, W A Z E. You may have used Waze to to get around. It's the mapping traffic traffic mapping company. And he started a company to help us help you manage your 401ks and, uh, uh, and, and other retirement accounts that where you may want help in your retirement account at the company you're working with. Pontera gives us the ability to actually make trades in the account. The SEC doesn't want us to get your password and to log into the site. If we do that, the SEC Securities and Exchange Commission says we have custody and they don't want, they don't want that. So Pontera gives us the ability where you put the password in and we can help you integrate your 401k with the rest of your investments. Um, guideline, we are helping uh, our clients who have companies, businesses, implement 401k plans. You may have a 401k plan. We use the guideline product in our company, and we have found the fees to be much lower than the fidelities of the world and even the vanguards of the world and the selection to be really good. So we can buy Vanguard funds in it. We can buy DFA funds, for example, 
in it and they give a nifty phone thing. And so uh, everybody seems to like it. So if you need a 401k plan in your company, we can help you with that. DPL uh, helps us on insurance needs, uh, ranging from life insurance to um, long-term care insurance to uh, disability insurance. What, I didn't hear one. Annuities. annuities and annuities. Uh, and so they're uh, very helpful to us. Medicare back office, we've been offering through to clients. This is a group that helps. So if you need help figuring out Medicare, whether you're already taking it or about to take it, uh, <clears throat> then they're, they're really good. Uh, JC, you've done a lot of work with them and they, they, they help. We don't have all the answers on Medicare. It's such a complex thing. So we turn to them to, 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 to be helpful there. Um, Von Tobel is a, is a Swiss bank. Um, we have worked very hard to create that relationship, as Bob, you know, and uh, uh, um, Rolf, the Swiss are very deliberate and slow moving uh, at, at, uh, at certain things. We found that to be the case with Vontobo, but we now have that relationship up and running. If you want a Swiss account, we can help you get that set up. And there are reasons why you may want it. Probably for most people, it's not for them, but if you do, uh, we have that relationship. And then Strata Trust is a relationship for self-directed IRAs. Uh, that's a non-standard IRA where you might invest in something that is not a publicly traded stock or a publicly traded bond. So for example, I made an investment in a, uh, in uh, well, two, two investments, didn't I? Two, Casey, two, uh, in some private companies that are kind of startup type companies. And I put the investment I use my IRA money through Strata Trust, but the, the regulations to set that up are much more stringent and they have all sorts of due diligence. So Fidelity can't do that. That takes a specialized custodian like Strata Trust. So if you have, if, if, you, if you ever come across some sort of private opportunity that you want to do, Dad, you have that with, uh, with uh, somebody uh, where some loans or whatever the case is. You could, and, and it could be real estate, Whatever the case is, it's non-standard, but you want to fund it with your IRA money. You, we can do, help you do that with, with Strata Trust. Okay, what else is new? Casey Moss is new, but she's not that new. She started in January, and Casey, you are fabulous, and uh, we love having you. And Casey is so helpful. Um, uh, Casey's kind of I think of Casey as kind of like uh, our um, what are those tennis machines where you hit the ball and it comes right back at you. What are those machines? Or, or I don't know, whatever, something like that. You know, like I'll send it back, it comes right back, here comes back with the answer. So Casey is amazing. Casey's heading our administrative uh, work. So when you need to move money or get answers from Fidelity or whatever the case is, Casey's doing a phenomenal job. It's great to have you. Thank you for, for being here. And she started in January 22, she's a P Texas public notary, a native Houstonian, although technically your Tomball in Cyprus, in the Burbs, uh, Bachelor of Business Administration at Sam Houston State, and this is what she likes to do, electronic music festivals. You're going to one this weekend. Uh, she likes to play video games, biking and skating at the park, cooking and working out, and she plays, really, all three of those? The oboe, the alto, saxophone, and the tenor saxophone. So if any of you want to start a band, uh, there you go. And Casey, I'm going to turn it over to you to now talk about data loading into MCM 360. We built this platform to store your information. And we're, Casey's going to talk about well, how do we get information into it? Well, it's the first I've been called a tennis machine before. So, <laughs> um, but, uh, but thank you for the introduction. I'm super happy to be here and we're really excited. And some of you guys, most of y'all in the room I've met before. Some it's first person to person, some others I've con uh, connected with over email or maybe over the phone. So um, super excited to be here. Um, so basically data learning is a new service that we have talked about for months. And when we think about NTM 360 and what, what it is and what we want it to be, um, I think Leonard put it perfectly that it's a client personal information management system. It's what I would think is your digital filing cabinet. Um, I know my mom at home still has her file cabinet with all their papers in it and all the stuff she's filed over like the last decade. And 
Um, now we're going to a more digital world where everything's going digital. We're getting away from paper. We're going to carrying our cell phones everywhere. And it's like, if we don't have it, it's like, I don't know what to do. Um, and even carrying our iPads everywhere. So um, the goal is to help you put your data in 360. Um, we have started um, releasing other features to allow you to do that at home. Um, but now this is a chance that you get to work directly with me to have me help you do that or do it for you. Um, so that's where I want to kind of piggyback off of that and talk about different modes of service that I can work with you guys with. So first one being self-service is more of a do it yourself on your own time. If you have the chance to, um, if you've already have physical documents into PDF format or have them somewhere digitally, then you can input that in 360 along with any other information off of that document yourself. And then we're basically here to answer questions. Or if you're like, I'm not sure where this belongs, maybe it's in a specific category, which we'll go over on the next slide here in a few minutes. Um, but I'm just not sure where does this belong? What do I put on this? You know, that's what we're here for. Um, so we'll help answer those questions and kind of get you moving in the right direction. Um, a hybrid model is really, we work hand in hand. So you guys will work directly with me. I'll help you do that. But then a lot of it can also be done at home yourself. So if there's specific things that are like, this is way too much for me, it's like way over my head, I'll have you do this and then I'll do this one at home. So it's kind of tag teaming it and we'll work together. Um, full service offering is really, I do everything for you. So <laughs> it's a lot to take on, but you know, I'm, I'm prepared for it. I'm ready for the challenge. It's something I'm good at. <laughs> I'm a very organized person, so won't be an issue for me. Um, but basically uh, having you guys send everything you want to have uploaded all the documents, all the data, everything. Um, and we'll start with a couple of different ways to do that, um, which will be through quarterly sessions, which we can do either in our office. So you'll meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. We'll set up some times, go over what specific categories you want to focus on, what things you want to put in, what's more important to you. Um, or we can also do that virtually over Zoom. So we have a couple of different options. And then this will also be something we'll do every quarter. Um, you know, after looking at how uh, kind of our frequency of how we how long this will take, what we want to do, um, about three months is pretty what we think is a pretty good time frame of getting you guys to have to be organized. If you decide to have, you know, me do everything for you, that will give you plenty of time to find everything you want to have uploaded, get organized, know what you have. And then you can bring it to me, we can discuss, and then I can put everything in for you. And then once we do multiple sessions, which will be around two to three, um, we can hand off things, go on to the next thing. And it's kind of a smooth and seamless transition. So right here, um, we have approximately 40 or so different categories of data in 360. So the way that we kind of put this together is through what is kind of more um, kind of important or pertinent information. So just for example, so members of your family, you know, we, we work with plenty of your, you know, you guys, but also we work with other members of your family and we work, maybe you have an assistant that does stuff on your behalf. That's important for us to know. So members, um, tax documents, you know, we have to keep seven years of tax returns. <laughs> if you don't put them on paper, where are you going to put them? Right. So we have to store those there, your trusts, your wills, your medical directives, your power of attorneys, things you wouldn't think that you need to know where they are. You need to know where they are or possibly what they say. And especially now that we carry a cell phone with us everywhere, we carry maybe an iPad or we're on the go. We have our laptops. NCM 360 is we can access it from literally anywhere in the world as long as you have an Internet connection and a, and a device to do so. Um, and the same thing for any of you guys who have entities and separate businesses and other things that you, you know, touch on multiple times throughout the year, or, you know, maybe it's just once a year, but it's like, Hey, I need to know that I need to know where that is. Um, same thing for your insurance. I mean, I can't tell you how many times they're like, Hey, what's your insurance number for your car insurance? And I'm like, uh, I don't know <laughs> because I don't have a paper insurance card anymore. So it's like those kinds of things. If I can pull it up within a couple minutes and I know what it is, it's like, okay, here's my insurance card number, or here's my license plate number or whatever that is. Then I have access to it. Um, session two, we kind of start moving on to other things that are not really the 
kind of high priority items, but are still everything in this list could be a priority to you. Um, you know, elder care are super important, health events, perf your professionals that you work with. You know, we talked about um, knowing, you know, CPA, what CPA you work with, who's your estate attorney. Um, if you are working on, you know, real estate and maybe you have like a, a broker that you work with or someone that we need to have contact with or need to know to contact for any questions, you know, we have that in there. Um, your career assets are super important, especially if you have, you know, your car, your home, if you have a boat, maybe you like to go on the lake or something like that. You know, it's kind of important. We might need to know that. Um, your vehicles, self-explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then session three, we kind of talk about kind of the remainder things. So these might not be your super important areas, but, you know, we don't necessarily need to know your uh, model of your dishwasher or your fridge at home. But if that's something, you know, maybe you have issues with it and have issues maintaining it a lot, and maybe you need to know what it is for some reason, then it's there. Um, and then just other areas like this that, um, that we're going to be working with. So, um, at the end of the presentation, there will be an option if you guys are interested. We've already have a couple clients that I'll be working with beginning in January. Um, so for anyone else, I would love to get the chance to con uh, connect with you and to talk to you a little bit about it more in some detail. Um, so next, I'm going to go to Catherine, who's going to talk to you guys about more 360 features. There you go. Thanks, Casey. Um, and Casey hit on a really great point that I'm going to kind of piggyback off of segue into my part. Um, we released NCM 360 to clients one year ago, almost to the day uh, at last year's conference. Um, over the year, I've um, had sessions with a good number of you guys in the room and a lot of uh, clients, uh, people joining us on the virtual call um, and other clients. So throughout the year, we've gotten a good number of clients onto the system. We're really excited about that. Um, the two main things that come out of those conversations when I have with clients, the kind of the main benefits, people who in the beginning may be like, oh, I don't know if I want to get onto this system. We spend some time on it. We go through it. And nine times out of 10, if not better odds than that, by the end of it, I think people really start to say, huh, okay, I can really see the value in this. And the value for, is what's communicated back to us is two parts. One, getting yourself organized. No one wants to do it, but the end result is that you're organized and your things are all in one place. Oh, I think I, oh, anyways, well, there we go. So the first part is you're organized. Like Casey said, not every area is applicable to every person, but the categories of data that are applicable to your financial situation, Casey will help you get that information in. Um, if, uh, well, let me go back. So the second, the second big benefit, and I'm going to touch on both of these a little bit, is not only are you organized, but you're also able to pass an organized set of information on to the people in your life that you trust, whether that's your adult children, um, whether that's your um, executive, your estate, um, other professionals that you might want to share parts of your data with. Um, so we're going to touch on both of those things really quickly. Um, first of all, just recently, I believe um, maybe in the spring, we enabled the ability for clients to upload your own documents. Last year, you could get on, you could add a number of records. I'm sorry, my voice is starting to go. You could add a number of records, but now you as clients are also able to add documents. Um, what that means, you can upload a document just to the document section, but what you can also do is that document is connected to potentially a record. So if you have the title of your car um, and you've got the PDF of it and you say, I want to upload my car title to NCM 360, well, you can just do that as a document, but you can also create a document connected to a vehicle record. And I know it's kind of hard to see this without seeing an example of it, but the point is, is that the, the documents or the attachments that you're uploading to the system can be directly connected to records that it's uh, applicable to. And clients can now, you, you guys all, how you have the access now to upload PDFs and have them connected to those records. If you need a refresher or an example on some of this, um, please feel free to give me a call. We can do that at any time. And the other um, new feature that we're really excited about, and um, this goes to the second point, was that you are now able to share organized information um, with the people in your life that you trust, is you now have the ability to add associate users. Um, what this means, and I'll show you, we've got a little screenshot. Um, what this means is you can now um, go to the permissions tab 
And we wanted to make it very easy for you to do this. So um, you can go and for the example here, um, I'm gonna add Jane's sample as an associate user. I'm gonna put in Jane's email. And the next feature is you get to pick and choose what categories of data that you wanna share with Jane. So if you've got a 15 year old son who you want him to start getting introduced to certain aspects of your family's finances, maybe it's addresses, maybe it's uh, your careers, uh, charities that you all donate to, but you're not quite ready for him to have access to all of your accounts um, or all of your estate documents, you can pick and choose which categories of data you wanna share with different associate users. From here, the access goes out to the associate user and anything that's not checked off, they can't see it. So if it's checked off, you got access to it, you can change permissions for people at any time. So if you decide, okay, he's 18 now, now we're gonna go and we're gonna add real estate records. I want him to know the access to our real estate records or if it's a professional and you know, you can, you can pick and choose and you can add and remove access to any category of data um, whenever you like, and that kind of changes their access. And um, so we're really excited about that. Um, it's kind of just out and about. If that is something they're interested in or anything else we're kind of talking about, make sure you check that off on the evaluation survey and um, we'll be happy to get you going on it. And that's what I've got. On to JC. All right, so I'm gonna stand over here. Um, we're gonna start with the Secure Act 2.0. Um, so many of you might, oh, did I just end it? What did I push? What did I press? I'm sorry. I My knuckle hit it. Uh -oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. We're rewinding. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, so many of you might recall the SECURE Act that passed in the end of uh, 2019, where they increased the RMD age from 70 and a half to age 72. Um, so this SECURE Act 2.0 is basically a continuation of that. It hasn't quite passed yet, um, but there is strong bipartisan support to pass it. Um, so they're expecting hopefully towards the end of the year that this does pass. And what this is gonna do now um, for the RMDs is gradually increase it to age 75 by 2033. So it's not gonna skip straight to 75 from the current 72. Uh, we're, we're thinking starting next year, it'll go to 73. Um, couple more years, it'll go to 74. And then by 2033, you won't be required to make those distributions from your qualified accounts until age 75. Another thing they are proposing, I'm doing it again. The, another thing I, uh, they are proposing is to um, reduce the penalty on RMDs that are not distributed out of your account by the end of the year. Um, you guys don't have to worry about that because we make sure that you do take care of that. Uh, but they're reducing that penalty from 50% to 25% uh, or 10% is what is currently being proposed. Um, catch up contributions on 401ks. Um, so right now, um, when you turn 50, you're able to make additional catch up contributions to your 401k plans and simple IRAs. Um, but basically they're, they're adding another step here for when you turn about 60 to 64. You'll now be able to contribute up to ten thousand dollars in addition to the current limit right now this year it's twenty thousand five hundred um so all in say at 60 you could contribute you know over thirty thousand dollars into your 401k for the year and then for simple iras um they're bumping it from three thousand to five thousand dollars on the additional catch-up contribution portion um, but all of these will be after tax or roth contributions so i think previously it's all been pre-tax, um, these additional catch-up contributions will only be after tax. All right, uh, workplace retirement plans. Um, so there is a piece currently, um, if you have a 401k plan at an old employer, you move to a new employer, they have the option to auto port that 401k to your new plan. Um, I think the previous uh, limit was 5,000, now they've upped it to $7,000. Um, the thought here is, so that you know you're, you're not losing or abandoning um, a 401k plan um, they've also they're working on a lost and found website so if you think maybe you had an old 401k plan at an employer that you worked for you know for a short amount of time you can search and see if maybe you have some money that's been abandoned <laughs> um, a student loan payment match um, so this is proposing that you know maybe you have a recent grad who has just started working they have pretty um, big student loan payments, they can't really afford to make an additional uh, 401k contribution on top of that. 
Um, the idea here, here is that the employer will now be able to match their student loan payment into their 401k and essentially start it for them. So while they're making those student loan payments, the employer is starting that 401k for them. All right, uh, 401k uh, distributions. Um, so there are new, some new exemptions for um, people who are under the 59 and a half um, age right now for early distributions um, that are exempt from the 10% penalty that you would have originally had. And that includes uh, terminally ill, domestic abuse victims, and then in cases of federally declared disasters. Um, in 2020, COVID was that. Um, you could make distributions from your IRA um, before 59 and a half without the 10% penalty, though it is still taxable. All proposed, yes, yeah, we do think it's, most of this is gonna pass kind of as is. Um, there's a few things they have to work out, but towards the end of the year is what we're expecting. Um, and lastly, they are working on a savings component feature for 401k plans. Um, and that's just kind of for a general emergency distribution. Right now they're thinking maybe a thousand dollars. This has to be a vested amount. Um, and that way, you know, for whatever emergency distribution that doesn't qualify for any of these early 10% uh, waivers, you can make it just kind of at your own discretion without the 10% penalty to pay back into the plan over time. Uh, next, I'm gonna talk about trust and wills. This is kind of a new platform that we have been evaluating. Um, it's an online estate document generator. Um, we think this is kind of more for people who have very simple estate plans. Um, we still recommend if you have more complex situations, work with an estate attorney through someone in our ProNet. Um, but if you do have kind of a more simple um, case, I kind of call this the TurboTax of uh, estate documents. Um, so you can go in, answer a set of questions, fill out all your asset information, and they can prepare wills, medical directives, power of attorneys, um, and even living trusts. Um, and this is all state specific. So even if you don't live in Texas, you can use it. Um, we think it's probably something good for the next gen so, so they can have something to start with. Um, and their pricing is pretty, it's pretty fair. And we do have samples available of those documents if anyone would like to see what those look like. Okay, uh, Leonard and I are gonna talk about trading and rebalancing. Um, and we wanna start by kind of walking you through our rebalancing demonstration, how we do that. Um, I will do it here on this computer, is that right, Catherine? Mm -hmm. We wanted to give you a flavor for this because uh, we talked about how we had migrated over to this system and it took us well over a year uh, to get to this uh, system that's put out by Orion. It's how we do our performance reporting for you. But when we talk about rebalancing your portfolio, we wanted you to see what, what does that mean? What does that look like? Uh, and so um, we're going to show you this software. And this is something that JC and I work together on when we work on your uh, portfolio. The other thing I want to mention is we've given you a copy in your uh, folder of the current state of our model portfolios. We have 11 of them all the way from a 100% bond portfolio to a 100% stock portfolio. Most of you are somewhere in the middle of their model five or six or seven or four, et cetera. Um, uh, and we've been uh, making changes to the model, not massive open heart surgery, but changes, especially in the fixed income portion of the portfolio to take advantage of those higher yields that I talked about uh, earlier this morning. That is where we are making a lot of moves of money is in the fixed income portion and in those categories. And so what, what, what does it mean when we go into rebalance your portfolio? So we're going to show you, we're going to do it with one account uh, to show you what that looks like. And um, oh, uh, uh, let me also mention that we have, a, we have created an enhanced cash model also. So if you have cash, maybe you have an account where you're like, I like to keep a bunch of cash there. Um, there is still a big difference between the Fidelity Sweep cash account. The ticker is FDRXX. It's the Fidelity Government Reserve. They're still not paying much interest because they want to make a bunch of money by paying a little bit of interest on that money market fund. So we've created a, an enhanced cash portfolio where we can take whatever you want that you're calling cash, and we have built a portfolio that will earn you around 4% with low duration of about a half a year in duration uh, to, to get you higher interest rates than what the Fidelity Sweep account carries. So if you have any interest in that, you've got money where you want to keep it close to cash, 
we can do that. Okay. So, uh, all right, Jason, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Sarah. Okay. So, what you got your gonna... mic? You have to have. Yeah, you got your you got mic. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So, what we're going to do here is run a rebalance on this client sample joint account. You can see that they are in a model five, a taxable model five. And if you have that sheet in front of you, you can see that is a 50% equity, a 50% fixed income portfolio. And so, what we're going to do is run a rebalance here. It's going to do some analytics for us. I can't use this old computer. Okay. We're going to use our default preferences here on this one. And here are the, are the trades that it's going to propose for us. It's working, working down there. There we go. Okay. So let's pull it up here on the viewer. Okay, so essentially what this is showing us is the uh, trades it's proposing to get it back to model. So this account has probably um, appreciated, the equity is appreciated in this account. So they're probably closer to maybe a 60-40 or a 70-30. So we want to bring it back down to that 50-50. And so what you can see here, I'll open this a little bigger, is it wants to, I like to start with the cells. So I like to see what it's, what it's selling first. So we have some overweight allocations here in some of these funds. Um, basically, we just go through the line here and say, okay, it wants to sell these funds here in order to raise enough cash to put it back into these funds down here, which is more fixed income, okay? So it's selling down the equity in the account and adding it back to the fixed income portion. But one thing we have to be careful of is the taxes. This is a taxable account. So we have a cool module down here that basically gives all that data for us. So the proposed tr uh, trade here, there's a $15,000 short-term loss, but there's a $101,000 uh, long-term gain here. So we don't really want to hit the client with this $86,000 gain on this one trade. So what we do is we, you know, we go back and forth with, you know, what can we tweak? How can we bring it back as close as possible? Um, because that would be, you know, maybe a seven thousand dollar gain. And one also neat thing here is it pulls your current year to date gain or loss from Fidelity, your Fidelity accounts, and it brings it in right here for us. So we already know that there's a thirteen thousand dollar loss in this account for the year. We can use that to offset some of the eighty six, but it's still still seventy two thousand dollar gain. So don't want to do that probably, <laughs> unless they really just want to get back to fifty fifty. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just kind of talk it through and see, you know, it looks like this ACW is probably going to be our big offender here. And yes, it is. So you can see just it wants to liquidate that position because it's not a position that we hold in the model, but it does still have some of the allocation built into it that we do have in the model. So what we'll probably do is work around that instead of generating one hundred forty one thousand dollar gain by selling that. We'll leave it there and we'll work around it. Um, I think Acqui is both uh, U.S. and international yeah, stock. Yeah, it's, so, it's a global fund. So we'll work around it and um, get as close as 50-50 as we can with as little tax as possible. Yeah. So so this is the tool. And you see that this is this is where we're spending a lot of time as we as we make changes to the model that you have a copy of. And, ha and how, how do we do it? For one of your accounts or three of your accounts or 10 of your accounts or whatever the case is and we have to have this technology to do it it's too many it's too many moving parts and this is rebalancing software and so this and the other software we're probably paying fifty thousand dollars a year for the software something like that right 40 something it's it's not it's not cheap but it's a critical tool for us to have to be able to deliver to you the portfolio that we want you to have keeping in mind the tax effects that can occur from our trading. So uh, we don't expect you to memorize all this, but we, want, we wanted you to see it today so that when we say we're rebalancing your portfolio, you understand what we're doing to do that. John, you have a question? Yeah. We had another product that was put out by Morningstar and it had been, so we've had rebalancing software. The product was built by a CPA firm in San Diego. Nothing wrong with the CPA firm. And frankly, 
if you knew how to work the software, there wasn't that much wrong with it, but there were a lot of problems with it. Morningstar bought it and didn't do anything to improve it. And so we, we were frustrated with the features of it. There, there are a number of rebalancing programs, but, but um, that's why we made the move a couple of years ago to pull ourselves out of the Morningstar platform and move over to the Orion platform. Orion is a very big, one of the providers in our business, and we're very, very glad we did it. It was a, you know, you can imagine what it took to, for us to get out of that system, move all client accounts over and, uh, and, and, and build our models. And then we also had to make some changes as to how we administered the model simply because of some of the uh, peculiarities of how this rebalancer operates. Um, all the rebalancer salespeople come in and tell you, oh, it'll do that, and it'll do that, and it'll do, oh, yeah. And we'll say, well, can it do that? Oh, yeah, it can do that. Yeah, right. And then, you know, frankly, I haven't heard from our sales guy since we wrote the contract, right? He's, he's disappeared. And you're left, you're left with all the things that it was supposed to do that it doesn't do. And so we literally had to make a number of changes to how we managed our models. But you can see it's critical. And the other really important thing is that it allows us to... Uh, it allows us to change your portfolio very quickly. We have an enormous amount of power and leverage over your portfolio, and not just yours, over our whole practice. So if tomorrow we decided we, you know, we don't like that thing or whatever, it's it, or we like something, we can get it into all client portfolios very quickly because of this. And it also, I think another interesting, well, like we can't show it because it's got, it's got names and portfolio values on it for privacy. But it has a nice thing that tells us each of your accounts, how far off is it from the model? Mm -hmm. And we, we get that report. So it'll tell us, you know, you're whatever, 10% off or, or, you know, 90% off. And there may be a reason why someone's 90% off. You know, for example, somebody has a large holding in one thing, and if we sold it, it would have a lot of taxes. And so that's the portfolio, you know. But, but at least we know the reason. And so this is giving us the ability to, to know exactly where a client portfolio has a variance from the model. And, and then maybe we can do something about it. Maybe we can't do something about it for tax reasons or for other reasons, but it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a powerful piece of software. And uh, we wanted you to see that because in this year of 2022, as changes are being made and, and uh, um, markets are, have been doing what they're doing, we, we want you to see that your accounts are being uh, uh, linked and managed by a very powerful piece of software that, 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 uh, that JC and I work on a daily basis. Any other questions about, about yes, Rolf? Just to confirm, there's an account in your IRA. Yes, account. yes. You have total freedom because there is no tax increase. Correct, that's right. Maybe. One of the things we're hitting this year, which is a problem, is something called the wash sale rule. And the wash sale rule says that you may not take a, a, a you, if you take a loss, and there are losses to take this year, we've been spending a lot of time, and this helps us calculate where should we take losses and how should we take losses. When you get a year like this year where stock funds are down, stocks are down 25%, bonds are down 15%, we're moving to take losses and give our clients taxable benefits, not in IRAs, but in regular accounts. Well, if you take a loss in a taxable account, but you either buy that same security or have bought that same security in a 30-day period prior to the taking of the loss or subsequent to the taking of the loss, you have violated something called the wash sale rule and you have invalidated your loss. And that can happen even if one share of a dividend has reinvested you have violated the wash sale rule, even if it's bought in, even if the purchase of the dividend was bought in the IRA. It's very confusing what I'm saying, but we have had to be very, very careful this year not to violate the wash sale rule as we take losses for people because of multiple accounts. You can violate the wash sale rule from within an IRA. And one of the questions has been, well, what about a trust? You know, and so JC and I've had to get in and look at trusts and what are the, you know, what, how does the IRS regard being the, if you're the beneficiary of a trust and you break the wash sale from within a trust, does that, you know, have you violated the wash sale? So you're right. 
It is correct. There is no tax impact from trading within the IRA, but trading within the IRA can impact wash sale rules outside the IRA. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. From, um, from the weather IT, um, how often are our accounts rebalanced? Good question. Can you repeat the question? How often are accounts rebalanced? Um, it depends on the account. We've had some accounts have been rebalanced two, two, two times this year. Mm -hmm. Have we had anybody rebalanced three times? Not really. Uh, this year, I'd say many accounts will be rebalanced at least once. There may be accounts that cannot be rebalanced at all. We hit quite a number where for various tax reasons where we want to rebalance them, but we've got tax handcuffs on us and we have to work around it. Other places where we can sell partial amounts of a position. There may be dividends that have reinvested and the dividend reinvestment has a loss, but the original position doesn't. And so we can actually have to dig into the lots of the position itself. So uh, it's a tricky question. Uh, on average, I'd say once, once, once a year this year is a good one. Yes, Charlotte. With the rebalancing, does that come from us as, a, as investors when you contact me? Are you all reviewing no, them uh, Another great question. Periodically and then- Yes. Like, yeah. Yes, another great question. Um, JC and I look at our list of clients and accounts all the time. We, we, we're going through the list and we're going through the list again and we're going through the list again. That, that may bring our attention to rebalancing. The software may bring our attention to opportunities from a tax standpoint or from the variance screener that I was telling you about. It'll tell us how far off of model something is. So that's the, that's the second. The third is we might have a, have a meeting. And you all may, and so somebody may say, I want to be more aggressive in the portfolio. And we may agree that that's the right thing to do, given your position. Or we may decide together, we don't think you need to be this aggressive, and we want to make it less aggressive. So, so that happens pretty regularly, that some decisions are made in a client meeting. Um, is, like no. Okay. No, and there are academic studies that you that you if you rebalance too much, you've got trading costs. Now the good news is is we've been moving our portfolios toward pushing down trading costs even lower than they were. Uh, and our friends from Dimensional have helped us a lot with that because they've introduced a whole uh, series of new funds that are called ETFs, exchange traded funds. And uh, they've done a tremendous amount of work and they've done an amazing job in bringing out a whole other line of funds, that trade like stocks rather than their traditional mutual funds, which clear at the end of the day, uh, these are called open end mutual funds, and they clear at the end of the day when they at Dimensional will come up with what's called the net asset value of the fund. And at the end of the day, if you make a buy, you get the net asset value at the end of the day. So unlike a stock, it's trading during the day and there's bid asks, the original funds didn't do that. Now they have a set of ETFs that trade during the day. There are some issues with that. We have to make sure that the price we're getting is, uh, is a good price and that the, that the spreads between the bid and the ask are not, are not so broad. And so we will put in what's called a limit order. We will say we will purchase this for you, but at a limited price to make sure that you are getting a good execution on that. And so we, we, we do that. But what you're, get, what you're getting is Fidelity trades those newer securities, these newer ETFs at a much lower commission than they did the older. Lacey, am I saying all this right? Have I? Doing great, she said. The, uh, for example, we used to pay $15 per trade on the old funds. And now it's Five maybe four ninety five four dollars four ninety nine or something. So we've cut the trading costs on a lot of this by sixty six percent. So we can trade more, but you can still over trade, you know. Uh, but trading costs have really fallen, so we can do more rebalancing because we're paying lower fees of commissions. Uh, I'm not aware that I'm notified when a rebalancing has 
taking place. I understand the rebalancing is done at your discretion and your professional expertise, but I'm not aware that I notify that something happens to my account that I can go back to agree with it, or at least I know something has been done and puts me, you know, at a comfort level. Okay, everything falling at uh, everything is falling in pieces, but Leo is doing something about it right now. All I know is everything is falling to pieces, but, to pieces, but I don't know what's being done. Well, everything is not falling to pieces. <laughs> I hope I hope you don't leave today's conference with that impression that everything is falling to pieces. Some things are I in, in, the climate change. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, this is why the relationship with fidelity is important because you can get you can we can enable your account for any trade notification coming out of fidelity since the trade is occurring in fidelity and they're the custodian if you want to receive trade notices you can get them on paper you can get them to your phone you you know there's all kinds of ways that fidelity can notify you of that sometimes we will send you an email if we're doing particularly some intensive work which involves a large dollar amount, let's put it that way, where we're really moving a large amount of money for a client, you know, 50% of the portfolio or something, we'll offer you a courtesy of sending you a, an email to say, we're, we're, we're doing this. And some trades where there may be a tax effect, we may even ask you, you know, or let you know that we're going to do this and there may be a tax effect um, that is substantial or meaningful, and we want you to okay it, you know? So we, we use our, our discretion on that. Uh, if we don't notify you, it's because we're generally just moving around the margins and the, and the trades are de minimis as a percentage of the total account. But I have to be proactive and set up my fidelity account that I get notification. You don't have to be, you don't have to be proactive. You can tell Casey, uh, that would be the only proactivity. So if anybody here, if you want fidelity to notify you whenever a trade is placed, They've got all kinds of notifications that come out of Fidelity text, and yes. they can send you a paper through okay. the mail if got you that. want, and so on. So see Casey if, if if that's something you want. More questions. In the model, did you, you had the same stocks and the same bonds, or if it's 50-50, uh, do they have the same stocks? Generally speaking, that's correct. Generally speaking, Carolyn, that's right. It's a question of what proportion are they held in in the portfolio. That's correct. That's correct. It's the it's the what what proportion of that particular category is held in the portfolio? Any any it, uh, do, are we do we have more slides? Yes. <laughs> oh. Um. We'll, we'll skip. We'll skip. We'll skip that. Uh. Hey. Year end planning. Sorry, we're going over a little bit, and and it's it's my fault. Already talked about uh, tax loss harvesting. These are just some year end planning things you want to think about. Let me tell you, last year my I made a charitable gift of appreciated stock to my charitable fund, and it really saved me at tax time because the charitable giving exemption is really one of the only remaining. Uh, deductions you can take on your Schedule A. Uh, and so I, I just pulled that out there. Uh, I, I was really going to owe the IRS a bunch more money uh, when I did my tax calculation. But Hannah and I made a, 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 a donation to our Fidelity Charitable Fund, and it really came through to help me. Roth conversions, we look at every year. Um, the CPAs always like this a lot more than we do, and the reason is they don't have software that actually analyzes the impact of what they're recommending. Um, and uh, I'm thinking of one client in particular where the CPA was pounding the table for them to convert a million dollars of their IRA to a Roth IRA at the end of last year. And um, our analysis using our financial planning software did not advise it because the client is in a higher tax rate. And so they would have paid a high tax rate on the conversion, right? And then imagine had they done it and then the money went into the Roth IRA and the stock market, which is usually what you invest in in the Roth IRA because it's 
very long-term growth, right? That, uh, and it's tax-free and tax-deferred. Let's say that their portfolio would have fallen 30%. So they would have paid the government a tax of 35% on the million dollar conversion, they would have paid the government $350,000. And then they would have seen the portfolio fall in value from there, uh, let's say another, another quarter of a million dollars. And their million dollar IRA would have become worth a half a million dollar IRA. And their CPA, based in San Antonio, so if you are a CPA, <laughs> telling every single one of their clients, you've got to convert your Roth IRA. So we are very careful about this. We have seen a lot of mistakes. And in our client base of 100 different households, there's only really a very few. It's usually if you, uh, if you uh, have, have lower income and a larger IRA. If you've, you know, you've retired, you haven't started taking RMDs or Social Security yet, there's that period of time maybe where you just don't have any income coming in, so you don't really have a high tax bracket. So that's when we like to take that then at that time. So we're happy to look at Roth conversions. We do it kind of as a matter of course at the end of every year, but I'm just telling you, it doesn't. our software does not come back very often pounding the table that you need to do a Roth IRA conversion. And we think the industry makes quite a lot of mistakes in their analysis here including the, the accounting industry, in our experience. Uh, personal gifting, the annual exclusionary gift exemption is now up to like $16,000 a year. If, if you have uh, young people you want to make a gift to and you don't want to have to file a gift tax return, you can give $16,000 of uh, cash or stock or anything, really, anything of value uh, without any without any tax consequence <coughs> here in 2022, that uh, goes you know you you get once a year. So if you don't do it in 2022, you can do it in 2023. But you you've only got this year to do it. Rolf, question. To clarify, that is per spouse. Per spouse. Per spouse. Yes. Per so, uh, recipient. Parents can give thirty-two thousand dollars to their yes. Spouse. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And something you can do if you really want to give. Your kid money, you can you can you can give thirty two thousand on December thirty first, and then you can give thirty two thousand on January one, and you've given your kid sixty four thousand dollars with no tax effects whatsoever. And uh, got that, Dad? <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Workplace retirement contributions, what we wanted to say here is um, just remember, if you're doing a 401k and if you have a small business, um, the December 31st deadline is different. You know, with an IRA, you have until the next year, till April 15th, to make a contribution for this year. Not so with a lot of workplace contributions. And I got slapped last year for it because I missed my contribution <laughs> and didn't get to make a contribution in my 401k. Uh, the custodian, which is guideline, had let me do it on some sort of basis for the previous three years. And I called them last year and said, okay, I'm ready. Called them on January 7th. I'm ready to make my contribution to my 401k for uh, uh, 2021. And they said, sorry, can't do it. So we just, we just want to remind everybody, be sure of what your deadlines are on workplace contributions. I did not have until April. I had until December 31st, and they and it was a hard stop. And I, I, there's nothing I could do. So, just just be sure that you that you don't assume that April 15 for whatever workplace because there's lots of different workplace plans. There's 401ks and 403bs, and there can be matching things that have to happen, and there can be profit sharing contributions that have to happen. So, especially if you're own a small business, uh, you know, where you're responsible for the plan. Just, we want to remind everybody to be careful. And then accelerated payments. This is always something that people think about in business. You know, we'll pay all of our bills on December 31st and take deductions for the current year. The big one is property tax, right? That you will pay your property tax that's due in January. You'll pay it before December 31st and take the deduction. 
I don't ever do that because I, I like to sort of keep it by the calendar year. But you know, you 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 could do that. Uh, although they've now capped the property tax deduction, and that makes that less attractive too. Uh, okay, um, are we there? We're there. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, and thanks to JC and to Casey, and especially thanks to Catherine. I hope you will all join me in giving her a big round of applause. This conference does not happen. Uh, Catherine starts planning this in May of every year, and um, and you can see the look in her eyes for like uh, four months, you know. And so she's going to she's going to go relax now. It's a lot of work. She works on the technology. And again, thanks to Chris, the technology ran flawlessly today. So big hand for Chris. Thanks to everybody who's joined us from home. We really appreciate it. And uh, thanks to all of you for your trust and your confidence. And uh, like I say, enjoy this down year in 2022, because we don't always get a good down year. Uh, and when we get a good down year, you know, we we want to use it to uh, um, uh, we want to make use of it to 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 get ready to build for future years that that often that often come uh, uh, more strongly than, than the current year. Thank you all and have a wonderful Thank you. Thank uh, you for and have a wonderful rest of the year and uh, a happy Halloween and all those good things. <laughs>